So it's a pretty Sunday afternoon and we thought we would just do one of our pastimes where we just come into the airport and we plane spot. There just happens to be this jet over there. It's idling. The APU is pretty loud, but... Damn! How did I miss that? We're down here at the General Aviation side of Lynchburg Airport. So we're gonna sit here and kind of go through this room footage. All right, I'm gonna try to do this out here. It's pollen all over. Look at that. All right, we're gonna try this again because it was really windy at the airport. So that whole thing we recorded, we had to, we're gonna have to redo because it was too windy. Where did we leave off? Uh, we were at the Coliseum. Yes, okay, Coliseum. Let me get a drink from uh, my new favorite, Ghost. Not sponsored, but they're really good. This is Red Berry. Very nice. Ah, hey, gosh. Okay, so we start off, we're here um, walking to the Coliseum, and we see this little car. It's like a little Mr. Bean car. They're so tiny and so short and so small and just people just keep, it's like clowns. They keep getting out and getting out. And it's like, where the hell are these people coming from? But this was just this old man and his uh, wife and who, kid or whoever. And I don't know, I guess they were coming to see the Coliseum in their Mr. Bean car. So Aaron's putting that sticker. What was that sticker? A I don't know, which one was it? Uh, I don't remember which one. But it's one of the ones from Jesse's sticker club that she sends out. We walk out past to the end of the sidewalk, uh, or the end of the road where the Coliseum is, and you just, as you get there, you, just, you see it from blocks and blocks and blocks away. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, we made it. Here we are in front of the Coliseum. And all that is... Uh -oh. But everything is rock, and it was so massive. It was just enormous. The Colosseum, gigantic. And all those people you see there in front of the Colosseum. I swear they're all peddlers. That was one of the biggest problems that we had was- The only problem we really had was, yeah. and it was only really around the Coliseum where they would harass you and keep coming after you, even after you told them no thank you. Most of the time we went somewhere, we tell them no thanks, we're good, they leave us alone. But yeah. there was one guy in particular here at the Coliseum that he decided to follow us. And you know, once you follow me, that's when you cross the line. That's just uncomfortable. And the, the problem was this was Sunday. So the ticket office for tickets to go in the Coliseum was closed and we had not purchased tickets to go in the Coliseum. And so all these scalpers were out in front of the Coliseum trying to sell their scalped tickets. 
And so here's a map of, or an aerial view of the Coliseum, and you can kind of see um, what it looks like from the inside. So as we get down to the ground level, um, you could really see like uh, the crumbling, all these little pieces of stone were just crumbling everywhere. Um, but the thing was just enormous. So we had to pick up rocks for some of our friends. We had to get a rock for Michaela, some dirt for Will. All right, Michaela. There's the Coliseum. It's a rock from the Coliseum. So there's proof, Michaela, your rock came from the Coliseum, right from the grounds. And then as we walked around, we had to go touch it since we couldn't go in it. Need another sip. The Arch of Constantine. We'll leave a link down below to the historical uh, significance of the Arch of Constantine because I couldn't tell you, but it was big and it was old. So here we are, Arch of Constantine and the Colosseum there in the background. And then more of ancient Rome. I think I remember we looked it up while we were there. I think you said uh, Constantine built it for his wife as a gift. Or maybe it was a gift for Constantine. Link down below. And this is right where we had that hagler that gave us issues. And this was more of the ruins, um, the hillside and the ruins of uh, that whole area. Don't really know what to say, but it was, there's a lot of history there. Lots of birds, birds flying everywhere, shitting on everything. Yeah, me, twice. Came down here, got Michaela's rock from here, got Will's dirt from all here. Right. All of yeah. Look at this. So we're right here. This guy, this guy with the uh, the paint art, he goes from a canvas to a painting in just seconds. It seems like and then he sprays the fire on it. Dry it out and see a lot of Oh yeah, the first time you ever had to pee, pay to go I had pee. to pay to pee. I had to pay to pee. I had to pee so bad, oh God, I had to pee so bad. Well, I just paid a euro to use the toilet. I had to pee. And I had to stand in the line and whew, but I feel better. So yeah, but that's common over there. You have to pay to pee because they know people got to pee. And there's no bathrooms because this was Rome. You just peed. There was no public toilet. More ruins, pretty ruins. There's trees. The I trees. Like and so, yeah, these trees, they all look very similar to this. They were... They're not olive trees. Are they lemon trees? No, those aren't lemon. They were all very manicured and they were sticks and then bush. <laughs> so then we're walking away from the Coliseum and we're headed toward Trevi Fountain, a Mini Cooper from Harry Potter. Not from Harry Potter, but Looks that's like what Harry Potter. It's a Mini Cooper. Trevi Fountain. So beautiful. Everything was just beautiful. And so you had to elbow your way up to the front because what you're supposed to do is throw a coin over your shoulder into the fountain. To ensure your return to Rome. Yeah. One, two, three. And 
so we had to take it all in and then find us a spot. So we'll leave a link down below for Trevi Fountain. Cotton candy. Yup. Thank you so much. Thank you. I need some cotton candy. Bye bye, Trevi. Trevi. How is it? It feels tough. Yeah. So at this point we're walking, let's see, so we left the Coliseum, we hit Trevi Fountain, now we're walking back towards Pantheon. Parthenon is in Greece. Pantheon. I always say the opposite one. Always. I will always say the opposite one. Watch, we're gonna go to Greece and I'm gonna call it the Parthenon. Pan Pantheon. And they're gonna throw an olive at your face and tell you it's the Parthenon. But before we go to the Pantheon, what would a trip to Italy be without visiting the local Apple store? He wanted to go. What? So here we are in Italy at the Apple store. <laughs> And his Tom Ford. He had to get his Tom Ford. We, we get it later in the duty free. Mm -hmm. But we got in trouble for filming because, I don't know. I think she had a lens. Yeah, and just glass, and you see it's just glass and stone and... Each product had its own room. So you had a room for iPhones and a room for Macs and a room for iPads. Room for iPads and Oh, uh, people just walking around everywhere it was um it's some of the whitest white paint it was so white and then this is the dante's inferno dante's inferno where the seven layers of hell that sounds like a bean dip seven layer I think bean it's dip. Seven layers. the seven levels we'll google yeah. it we're walking back towards the pantheon but Everybody was funneled through these alleyways where everybody was having dinner. Nine levels. The nine, nine levels. Nine circles. The nine circles of Dante's Inferno? Yeah. Yeah, circles of hell and Dante's Inferno. It's nine circles. Choo-choo! Here we are, Pantheon. Didn't go in the Pantheon. Free tour, by the way, but we didn't go in just because we were kind of museumed out at that point. I was getting hungry. So the Pantheon, it was just this big, massive structure. Uh, we'll leave a link down below, but just so big. And, you know, to think that rocks have been there for 2,000 years, it's just almost 2,000 years. It's just kind of mind-blowing that they're still standing. And, you know, how much sun and rain and snow and wind and bird shit ice. and ice that have been on those bricks and the blood and the things that those bricks have seen, it's really... You know, you get there and you have to take it all in and you're just awestruck by the magnitude and the historical significance, even though we may not know what the significance is. Um, you're just in the presence of something that is so old and, you know, Julius Caesar could have walked by that and touched it, you know, at some point. It just kind of blows your mind. Testing out that anamorphic lens.
a shout out to Moment for uh, all of those beautiful shots with the, the anamorphic lens. Those lenses are amazing. We'll leave a link up here for our first Italy vlog where we showcased St. Peter's Basilica at night. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We'll leave a link down below to our blog. AaronandTodd.com slash gear, I think is the, is the URL. So we're leaving Italy. We're out here catching the bus to get back to Fumicino. It was 14 pounds, so seven pounds per ticket. Uh, but we turned in the keys. Aaron had to buy a suitcase so that he could have his, cause he bought this cute uh, Italian leather bag. And so he put his wandered bag and some uh, few things in there. So we're gonna check that coming back. Lightweight. <laughs> We were fascinated. We were fascinated by that um, luggage wrapper. That was the coolest thing. Um, we had always seen people in the domestic on the in the domestic airports that had their luggage wrapped up like that, but we've never seen an airport domestically that would do that to go international. But here we are in an international airport coming back to the U.S. And so now we see people pay. It was what twelve euros? Yeah. Oh yeah, twelve euros. So now that you feel better, you got your suitcase wrap. So now we're headed to the uh, ticket counter to check in for our flight. It was Fumicino to Portugal and then Portugal to Dulles. Yep. But first, we got to get some of that good Italian lounge. So we go into the, I don't remember the name of it. But we had a really good breakfast and it was funny because they had an American breakfast and they had a British breakfast. And British breakfast comes with beans. Who eats baked beans for breakfast? British people, I guess. And those who do not travel, we don't mean a thing. We got all this shit out. <laughs> and you had a bunch of drinks, just some mimosas, or screwdrivers. <clears throat> and uh, one last poop before a long flight to, uh, well, no, this was only a, what, three hour flight, two hour flight? Yeah, two hours. Three hours. From Rome back to Portugal, and then the, the Lisbon to Dulles was our nine and a half hour flight. Yeah, six hours coming over, but nine hours going back because we're going against the jet stream. And the, the speed was significantly lower. It was six, 630 miles an hour going, but only 400 and something it's coming back. I think we maybe hit 700, but it was consistent because I was watching it consistently. It was 6, 620, 630. But yeah, that's the end of our Italy series. We hope you were entertained and you got to see some of Italy through our eyes. So if you're enjoying the content so far, leave us a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. Have a wonderful time!